Lux presents Hollywood. Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Joseph Cotton and Ann Baxter in Portrait of Jenny. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeler. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Once in every few years, a motion picture comes along which gives audiences a, a special feeling of adventure with a story that's off the beaten track. Tonight's play is a fine example because it's David O. Selznick's stirring production of Portrait of Jenny, one of the current hits of the screen and one which ranks very high on your request list. You'll hear Joseph Cotton in his original role giving one of those fine, sensitive performances for which he's noted both on the screen and in the Lux Radio Theater. Co-starring with Mr. Cotton is the brilliant young actress, Anne Baxter, in the title role of Jenny. Over the years, we've come to expect a fine job from stars like these, just as you expect a high standard of performance from Lux Flakes. Certain names always stand for quality, and Lux Flakes is one of those names. Now, Act One, A Portrait of Jenny, starring Joseph Cotton as Evan and Anne Baxter as Jenny. In the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City is a painting entitled Portrait of Jenny. Out of that painting comes our story. The truth of which lies not in the telling, but in your heart. This much we know, that there was a girl named Jenny who sat for the portrait. For the rest, science tells us that nothing ever dies, but only changes. And that the past and the future are together at our side forever. It was during the Depression winter of 1934. There's a type of suffering for the artist which is worse than anything a winter of poverty can do. It's more like the winter of the mind, a dreadful feeling of the world's indifference. Good morning, sir. What can I do for you? Well, you can buy one of my paintings, perhaps. <laughs> well, uh, well, of course, we buy very little time, seeing what they are. They're, they're landscapes, mostly. Landscapes. Too bad. They come in every day by the dozen. No, I'm afraid... Oh, <laughs> Miss Spinney, you startled me. Another artist, Mr. Matthews. Uh, yes, yes, uh, uh, this is Miss Spinney, my partner. How do you do? What's your name? Adams. Evan Adams. Well, what are you so defensive about? I'm not. Then don't be in such a hurry to put away your paintings. Uh, landscapes, Miss Spinney. Oh, nothing that'll interest you. Well, probably right. But I'd like to see what interests you. Well, you paint a nice boat. Thank you. Ever read Robert Browning? Long time ago. You remember his poem about Andrea del Sarto, the perfect painter? Proportion, anatomy, color. Oh, he had everything and nothing. He painted a perfect hand while Raphael drew a formless claw. But Raphael loved his work. <laughs> Poor Andrea del Sarto. I, I think I get your point. There isn't a drop of love in any of these paintings. Oh, really, Miss Spinney? I'm an old maid, Mr. Matthews, and nobody knows more about love than an old maid. What's the matter with you, Adam? You'll have to learn to care deeply for something. What do you mean by that, Adam? Anyway, we'll take the boat. Twelve dollars and a half, Mr. Adams, if there's any argument, there's no sale. Oh, there's no argument. Pay in, Mr. Matthews. Uh, yes, uh, here. Uh, have you changed for a dollar? I, I haven't got a dime. He'll owe us 50 cents, Mr. Matthews. Oh, I, I don't think you really want the painting. If I hadn't wanted it, I wouldn't have taken it. Your eyes... Well... You have beautiful eyes. Goodbye. Oh, dear. I, I'm afraid that picture isn't worth more than a couple of dollars. No. But Adams is. We're supposed to be in business for profit. I bought this for myself. <laughs> yes, Miss Finney. Of course. <laughs> I had a little money in my pocket. I, I started walking toward Central Park, filled with a sudden awareness of something extraordinary. 
The city sounds were muted and far away like something in a dream. I sat down on a bench and then I noticed a little package there, something wrapped up in newspaper. That package, it's mine. Oh, oh, I, I didn't know. Isn't anyone here with you? No. Why should there be? It's getting dark. But I don't have to go home yet. Anyway, you're with me. I'm Jenny. Jenny? Jenny what? Jenny Appleton. My mother and father are actors. They're working down at Hammerstein's Victoria. They do juggling on a rope. Hammerstein? Yeah. Well, that's... Why? That theater was torn down years ago when I was a boy. <laughs> oh, you must be thinking of some other place. Because I was there yesterday. Well, now, really, I remember... Now, let me see your pictures. How do you know their pictures? Oh, I just know. What's this one here? The church near the sea. Those are awfully little windows for such a big church. Well, they have to be little. There's so much wind on Cape Cod. I don't like it. It, it scares me. The wind? No. The black water. There should be a lighthouse out there by the ocean. How do you know? I don't exactly remember. Someday I'll show it to you out there on the rock. It's called Land's End Light. But you just said you didn't remember. I don't. I just know. I wish I liked your pictures, but I don't. <laughs> that's what everybody says. That's, that's why I can't sell them. Don't you sell anything you paint? Oh, an illustration once in a while for a story or an advertisement, but not very often. Cecily Brown's house is full of pictures. Who's Cecily Brown? She's my best friend. I go to school every day now, but only in the morning. What do you learn? Well... Yesterday, we learned about the Kaiser. He's the king of Germany. Well, he was a long time ago. Oh, you're wrong. Cecily's father is in Germany now, and he sees him all the time. I see. Well, I, I'm afraid I have to go now. I'll walk with you if you don't mind. I know a song. Want to hear it? Yes, I'd love to. Where I come from, nobody knows. And where I am going, everything goes. The wind blows, the sea flows, nobody knows. And where I am going, nobody knows. Who taught you that? Nobody. It's just a song. Do you know the game I like to play, Beth? Hmm. It's a wishing game. I'll tell you what I wish most. Well? I wish that you could wait for me to grow up so that we could always be together. But you won't, I guess. Well, I can't talk to you anymore. Goodbye. Wait a minute. That parcel on the bench, you forgot it. Oh, dear. Stay here. I'll get it for you. Oh, thank you. The little package wrapped in newspaper was still on the bench, but when I returned with it, Jenny was gone. I had dinner and went back to my room, but I, I couldn't get her out of my mind. Half amused, I started to sketch her from memory, a pencil sketch of, of a little girl in Central Park. Hiya, Mac. Where are you going? Morning, Gus. Had your breakfast? Just on the way. Come on, hop in the cab. How about having breakfast with me? Oh, not again, Gus. Besides, I'm wealthy. I sold a picture yesterday. Are you kidding? Got $12 and a half for it. Well, in that case, I might even start the meter. <laughs> you know, Gus, I don't get you at all. Why should you care if I eat? You want to know why? Because I got a lot of respect for a guy that's doing what he's got to do, even if maybe it's killing him. You want to paint pictures, so you're going right ahead and doing it no matter what. Oh, I like that, Mike. Hey, how about having breakfast at Moore's? I just remembered Moore said should I happen to see you to send you in. Me? Why? Well, how do I know? I guess he wants to see you. He gave me a job, Gus Moore. Gave me a job. A job here? Oh, well, I get all my meals for nothing. All I have to do is paint a mural on that wall there over the bar. Oh, that's not bad. All your meals, huh? Yesterday I sold a painting. Now I'm commissioned to do a mural. What's happened to me? <laughs> Maybe your luck's changing, huh? Oh. Well, come on, eat your breakfast. Hey, 
What's that on the floor? Hmm? Oh, must have dropped out of my coat pocket. It's a scarf, see? Belongs to a little girl I met in the park. Hmm, pretty big scarf for a little girl. She left it on a bench wrapped up in this newspaper. Funny kid, Gus said her parents were acrobats at Hammerstein. Hammerstein? But that was torn down years ago. She said she was there yesterday. <laughs> Some imagination them kids got. Hey, this newspaper. What about it? Well, look at it. The date. 1910. 1910? Where did you get an old paper like that? Oh, I told you. The little girl. A scarf was wrapped up in it. Well, Gus. Yeah, look at this. This ad. Huh? Hammerstein's Victoria, now appearing Eva Tangway, the American comedian. Well... Will Rogers, expert lariat thrower. How do you like no, that? No, 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 no. Down, down further. Look. Huh? Oh, oh. The Appletons. Novelty high wire act. Well, what about it? Well, it's just what she said. She said her name was Jenny Appleton. So? Now that I think of it, she wasn't dressed the way kids are now at all. Her clothes, her hat, they were old-fashioned. Hey, Adam. Yeah, yes, Mr. Moore. Hurry up, will you? I want you should have my ideas for that Muriel. Oh, yes, Mr. Moore. I'll be right there. <laughs> Well, let me see it. Well, the little girl I saw in the park, Mr. Matthews. Hmm. Oh, well, now, well, it's very good. Isn't it, Miss Spinney? Oh, yes, very good. You have a feeling for a face, Mr. Adams. Ever try portrait? Oh, not seriously. Oh, but you should, you should. As for the sketch, I'll give you $25 for it. Well, Adams, you can stop feeling sorry for yourself. I'm sorry, I'm getting three meals a day for painting a mural and now $25 for a sketch. Here's your money. Oh. Uh, take it before I change my mind. <laughs> And where are you going now? Oh, nowhere, anywhere. Where I come from, nobody knows. And where I'm going, everything goes. What's that? What's oh, the song that little girl sang in the park? <laughs> well, if you don't know whether you're coming or going, perhaps you'd like a cup of tea. Thank you, I would. <laughs> we'll be in my office, Mr. Matthews. You have a wonderful view of the park, Miss Finney. What's going on over there? Lots of ice skaters today. You know, I haven't skated since I was a kid in Maine. Real down east tonight. Oh, it's a fine little town, rivers, lakes, mountains. My father ran the general store until he died. My mother died a couple of years later. And what happened to you? Oh, worked my way through three years of college, and then I... <laughs> Fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's interesting. I want to ask you advice, Miss Benny. I, I don't feel sorry for myself the way you said. I'm facing a very practical problem. An artist facing a practical problem. Oh, not, not the kind you think. I... I don't mind being hungry. I don't even care about having to dodge the landlady most of the time. But, well, I know that every artist who ever amounted to anything went through a lot more than I have, but they knew they had something. You can take a lot of beatings when you know that. But you're not sure? You don't think you're a good artist? Why should I believe that of all the thousands of artists fighting for recognition that I'm one who has something worth putting on canvas? Oh, relax, Adams. It irritates me when you go on like that. You know, something about you appeals to me. I can't imagine what. I think you're like the bow I wanted when I was young. When I was doubting myself. No, not you too. And look what it brought me. Just a frustrated old maid lecturing a frustrated young painter. Miss Benny, what should I do? That pencil sketch shows what you can do. All you need is a little inspiration. Any inspiration. That, that little girl in the park. Well, I guess that does it. Now... How about you and me taking a twirl out there on the ice? Oh, go along with you. I left Miss Finney with a feeling of exhilaration I hadn't known in years. And just as if I could afford such luxuries, I rented a pair of ice skates. It was a fine, clear day. Everyone around me seemed young and full of laughter. Madam, Madam. Jenny, well, hello. Isn't this fun? Oh, I love ice skating. I can't believe it, you. you. You've grown so much taller. Oh, well, maybe you didn't see me so good before. No, I'm, I'm sure you've grown. Uh, of course I have. I'm hurting. Don't you remember our wish? Sure I do. Uh, you called me Mr. Adams. How did you know my name? The paintings you showed me. Your name was on them. Even Adams. Oh, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, oh, well, by the way, I have something of yours. Oh, what a pretty scar. You said it was yours. Did I? I'll tell you what. Why don't you keep it for me till I grow up? And then I'll have one more reason to grow up fast. All right, I will. I owe you a favor anyway. You do? I drew a sketch of you and sold it. Oh, I'm glad. The man who bought it and 
told me I ought to paint portraits. Well, who would you paint, Mr. Adams? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Maybe. Will you let it be me? <laughs> who else? Oh, you're not joking. You mean it. Of course. I'm going to have my picture painted. Won't Emily be mad? Emily? Emily's my best friend. I told you you were going to paint my picture. She said I was crazy. Emily? I thought you said Cecily was your best friend. Cecily? Cecily Brown? Oh, she moved away three years ago. I thought I told you. No, no, you didn't. Oh. It's funny. Doesn't matter. How would you, how would you like some hot chocolate? Oh, I love hot chocolate, Mr. Well, Adams. Let's have some. We can get it right over there. This is wonderful chocolate, Mr. Adams. Thank you. Jenny, tell me, where do you live? I'd, I'd like to come and see you. Well, I don't think there's any place you can come and see me yet. Why? Oh, it's just the way it is. When will you start my portrait? Well, whenever your parents will let you sit for me. Where are they now? At Hammerstein's again. Oh. They've got wonderful new tricks way up on the high wire. Sometimes it scares me to watch them. Of course, that's silly. That's why they're so famous. They scare everybody. I'd like to see them. Why don't you take me to Hammerstein? Oh, do let's go. I can get us in free. Uh, could you go to the matinee on Saturday? I think so. Where will we meet? Well, let's meet here in the park at that bench where we met before. I'll be there at 2 o'clock. Well, at least I'll try. Well, I really must go now. Must you? Goodbye, Mr. Adams. Goodbye, Jenny. <laughs> Looking for someone, Adam? Oh, oh, Miss Finney. I just thought I'd take a little walk. Well? Well? Who were you staring after? Oh, that little girl I told you about. Huh? See? She's crossing the road there by the tree. I know now that Finney didn't see Jenny. She looked at me as though I were a patient who needed watching. Saturday came, I went again to the park and waited for Jenny, but I sat there alone. Apparently, she'd forgotten. Suddenly, I decided to find out for myself what I could about Jenny's parents. I found their names in old programs at the public library, and then, by sheerest accident, someone told me about an old wardrobe woman. That's right, Miss Adams. I worked in wardrobe at Hammerstein's for many, many years. Then you remember some of the old acts. I'm trying to find someone who knew the Appletons. They were acrobats, I think, high trapeze. Oh, I knew them all, Mr. Adams. All. All of those wonderful people. And I have them right here in my scrapbook. Of course I remember the Appletons. And here's their picture, Mary and Frank Appleton. Who, who, who's this little girl with them? Why, that's their daughter. That's Jenny. There. Daughter? Mm, she must have been about 10 or 11 then. Well, isn't it possible that this child is their granddaughter? Oh, no, no. I knew Jenny when this picture was taken. Sweetest little girl. Big eyes and sad. I used to give her rock candy. Well, would you know where she is now, Mrs. Morgan? No. No, I lost track of her after her parents were killed. That was many years ago. Killed? The wire broke. Jenny was in the theater when it happened. You're sure you don't remember what happened to her? Well, it seems there was some talk about her aunt wanting to put her in a convent. Mm. Jenny wasn't a Catholic, but her aunt said a convent was the best place for a girl to be. Thank you very much, Mrs. Morgan. Oh, don't thank me, Mr. Adams. Isn't often I have a chance to share my memories. Well, I hope you'll find Jenny. She was a dear little girl. I hope so, too. <laughs> I knew now that a child named Jenny Appleton was not just a creature of my imagination. Such a child had existed, but beyond that, I, I couldn't think. The park that night was strangely empty. Nothing seemed real, not even the towers of the city or the myriad lights. And then as I came nearer to the bench, Jenny's bench. Jenny. Jenny, what's the matter? Father and mother. Father and... Something's happened. They've had an accident. I knew it would happen. I was always scared it would happen. And tonight... Tonight? Oh, Jenny, I... I know how you feel. I, I know how much it hurts. But it isn't hurting them. Nothing will ever hurt them again. Please. Try to think of it that way. But they're dead. We all die sometimes. I love them. 
They loved me. You mustn't be too unhappy. They wouldn't want you to be, would they? Would they? They told me once. They said if anything happened to them, I mustn't be unhappy because they were doing what they wanted to do. And, and if they... If anything happened, it would happen to them both at the same time. The way they wanted. There. You see? So... I shouldn't cry, should I? I guess I'm only crying for myself. Because they're gone. And because I'm lonely. No, Jenny, don't, don't, don't. Maybe I won't always be lonely. I don't know why, but I don't think I'll be lonely very long. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying fast now. My aunt is sending me to a convent. Convent? Do you want to go? Oh, yes, yes. After that, I'll be grown up. Don't you understand? No, Jenny, no, I, I don't understand. Each time I see you, you've changed. You're older. You talk about things that happened long ago. Did they? Sometimes I kind of think that, too. But maybe that's because I have to find something. Find something? But what? I'm not sure. But I think I'll know someday. I think I'll know when I find it. And I think you'll know, too. I hope so. You'll wait for me, won't you? You'll give me a little more time. All right, Jenny. Oh, listen. The stars. Can't you hear them? Listen to the stars coming out. There aren't any stars, Jenny. Not that I can see. It's it's too cloudy and... Jenny! And once again, as sudden as her coming, Jenny was gone. We'll return with Act Two of Portrait of Jenny in a moment. Libby, I'm still trying to decide whether it's the moving story or the magnificent acting that makes the 20th Century Fox production of Pinky such a great picture. Well, I think Daryl F. Zanuck deserves credit for the combination. When a lovely, light-skinned Negro girl tries to run away from herself, it makes an important human story. Jean Crane gives a very sympathetic performance. The part of Miss M, a domineering, warm-hearted aristocrat, seems meant for Ethel Barrymore. Isn't her vitality wonderful after 50 years in the theater? William Lundigan, who plays the young Boston doctor in Pinky, says she inspired everyone on the set. Jean Crane's acting has uh, matured remarkably. Well, she's growing up. Jean has two darling babies, you know, and takes personal care of them. Even the 6 a.m. feeding? Oh, yes, indeed. And even at that early hour, I'm sure Jean looks charming. You know, she has a wardrobe of smartly simple negligees in pastel colors that looks like a charm. In fact, Jean insists on Lux Flakes care for all her slips and nighties as well as her negligees. Hollywood stars are smart about such things. They know that Lux Flakes care really does keep washable silks, rayons, and nylons New looking far longer. And luxing is so easy. These tiny diamonds of lux make rich suds in a flash. Whisk away every trace of perspiration and soil. Yet slips and nighties stay color fresh and new looking. Tests prove that. Wrong washing methods are hard on pretty undies. But Lux Flakes Care keep colors lovely three times as long. That's one reason this fine product of Lever Brothers is so popular with women everywhere. Now, here's our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of Portrait of Jenny, starring Joseph Cotton as Eben and Anne Baxter as Jenny. Jenny was gone. And the mystery which surrounded her, the way she had come and the way she had disappeared, left me helpless and brooding. I was seized by memories so urgent that they were more real to me than my own identity. Everywhere I saw her. Everywhere I heard her. As 
the winter went by, I worked at whatever jobs I could find, and between times I struggled with the mural in Moore's saloon. But mostly I was content to do nothing, for I knew that I was worthless until and unless Jenny returned. But I needed to tell someone, and who was there to tell but Miss Finney at the art gallery. So at last you're ready to talk about it. All right, Adams, you're an artist who's lost his art, is that it? Something like that, I suppose, but I, I still could paint one important picture, Spinney. Maybe that's all I'm good for, but uh, uh, that much I know I can do. The portrait of Jenny? Yes, it's the only thing I've ever been sure of in my life. But you can't do it without her? Of course not. Suppose you never see her again. No, I, I can't even think of that. Maybe you never did see her, not really. So you think I created her? That's what you think, isn't it? That I imagined her because I needed her for... For an inspiration? Why not? Maybe you saw her, maybe you didn't. What's the difference? By the time you're my age, you'll learn to believe in lots of things you can't see. But if I were you, I'd stop moping. And do what? Stretch a new canvas. Get your brushes ready. You ask what I think, and I think that... I think that Jenny's coming back. That week, I finished the mural for Moore. It covered the wall. The colors were bright, and Moore was delighted. <laughs> but what's eating you, Mac? It's a great painting you've done. Come on, now, get up to the bar. They all like it, don't they, Gus? Maybe that's all that matters. <laughs> Moore's that proud of you, you'd think he painted it himself. The worst thing I've ever done. I'm ashamed of myself. Ah, oh, you're drunk. I wish I were. Then come on. Free beer, you'll never have a better chance. Gus, tell Moore I'm glad he's pleased. I'm going home. Uh, Mac, no, no, Mac, it's early yet. Mac, come back here. Hello, Evan. Jenny. Jenny, it can't be you. I tried to get here sooner, Evan, but I couldn't. You're beautiful, Jenny. And you've grown so. Well, of course I have. I'm hurrying. <laughs> Why, I'm in my first year of college well, at the convent. Let me look at you. Oh, Evan, I, I've thought of you so much. Could fill an eternity. What did you think? About how wonderful it all is. Now I've searched and searched. How we'd be together always. I'm almost sure. Do you know what Emily wants to know? Hmm. When you're going to marry me. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Evan. I know I'm not old enough yet, but I will be soon. Evan, what's that? Let's get that land's end, isn't it, in the lighthouse? How do you know? Have you ever been there? I don't know. I think... It's an old deserted lighthouse up on Cape Cod. I painted it long ago. Makes me unhappy. Well, then I'll put it away. Jenny, remember the portrait we planned? Your portrait? Then you haven't forgotten. Let's start it now, please. Jenny, sit over here. You don't mind? Mind? Oh, Evan, the girls will be so jealous when I tell them. Am I sitting right? Now, uh, turn your head the other way. No, 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 leave your hair alone. It's fine. It's just, it's just the way I want it. Yes, Evan. Uh, some of my friends at the convent are taking a veil now, next Sunday. Now, don't move. Uh, could you come and see the ceremony uh, with me? I'd love to, Jenny, only please sit still. I'm sorry, Evan. Evan, promise you won't forget me. Now, fix your eyes on something, Jenny. Hold your hand. That's fine. That's fine, Jenny. It was morning before I knew it. Jenny left to go back to the convent, and I let her go with hardly a word as I kept working intently on the portrait. But that Sunday, I went to New Jersey to the convent she'd told me about. Evan, Evan, what's wrong? Oh, nothing's wrong now, Jenny, but I was... I was afraid you might not be here. Oh, I told you I'd be here. This way, Evan. We'll have to hurry if we want to see the sun. the altar at Sister Mary of Mercy. I'm so glad you're waiting for me, Evan. It makes me feel a little closer to the truth of things. As if pretty soon I would understand. The sun's going down. In the same lovely sky. Just as it did yesterday and will tomorrow. What is tomorrow, Jenny? Doesn't matter. It's always. This was tomorrow, what? 
Where I come from, nobody knows. And where I'm going, everything goes. I've, I've heard that somewhere. <laughs> of course you have. You sang it to me that first day in the park. Did I? I've forgotten. The wind blows, the sea flows. God knows. I think he knows, Evan. where the master works. Well, Adams, where is it? Where's the portrait? Uh, sit over here, Spinney. Uh -huh. It's not much of a place, Mr. Matthews. Uh, here, here, here's a chair. We're not here to admire your studio, you know. Now, about the portrait, remember, it isn't finished yet. Oh, don't be coy. Let's see it. Well, well here it is. Oh. Well, now, well. What do you think? That you found what you were looking for. You like it? Adams, it's... It's always a dream in my business that someday you'll come across, uh, shall we say, a great painting. This is, I feel now, a sort of fulfillment of my... of... Uh, well... Uh, he means he likes it. I'm glad. But uh, it isn't finished. It really isn't. Take it's... it easy, Adams. Yes. Yes, it's a great painting. <laughs> I left my work on the portrait only to walk in the park, to linger at that bench, knowing I was caught by an enchantment beyond time and change, knowing at last that love is endless and today's little happiness only a part of it. A few such days went by, and then late one night in the park, Jenny was there waiting for me. Hold me, Evan, hold me. Hold Jenny. me tight. Jenny. Jenny, I've looked for you here so often. Oh, I had to see you tonight. I'm leaving the convent, Evan. I've graduated. Jenny, then we can be together. Together always. Evan, my aunt is ill. She wants me to go away with her for the summer. Hey, when, when do you have to go? Tomorrow. I couldn't go without saying goodbye. Goodbye? Oh, it'll only be for a few months. Anyway, we have until the morning. Oh, I'll be lost without you. No, no, don't say that. We can't both of us be lost. Evan, you're unhappy. You're going away with your aunt for the summer. Wherever it is, no matter how far away, it's a place that can be reached. That, that kind of distance I know about, you can measure it in miles and hours. But now I feel there's another kind of distance, Jenny. Evan, what is it? You know what I mean. A distance of yesterday and tomorrow, and it, it, it frightens me because there's no way to bridge it. Oh, but there is. At this moment, I know there is. Oh, I want it to be forever. It will be, Evan. It will be. Jenny, I'm not going to think of the summer or of the future at all. I, I leave that to you. Why we met, how it came about, I, I don't know. I know we were meant for each other. The strands of our lives are woven together and nothing can tear them apart. Oh, Evan, I, I wish you'd finish my portrait. My portrait. Yes, we'll finish it now. if I talk, Evan? I, I'll tell you if it does. Evan, do you think people can know what lies ahead? I mean, what's going to happen to them? You know how you feel sad about things sometimes, about things that have never happened. Perhaps they're the things that are going to happen to us. Perhaps we know it, and we're just afraid to admit it to ourselves. Jenny, you must... Oh, I guess that's silly. I guess it's just my funny mind. I won't talk anymore, Evan. I'm just going to sit here and let you work. Jenny. Jenny, are, oh. are you all right? Oh. Hello, Evan. Oh, hello. You fell asleep. Where are we? Together. <laughs> Poor darling, you must be worn out. I'm sorry. Jenny, look. It's finished. My picture. Oh. Eben, is it really me? It's you. Portrait of Jenny. Oh, I think it's a fine painting. Say it. I think it'll make you famous. I think someday it'll hang in a museum and people will come from all over the world to see it. If they do, it won't be my work they'll come to see. It'll be you. Oh, Eben, I want always just to sit and watch you Now that I've found a perfect model, I'll paint her again and again. Oh, and again. no, no, I didn't mean that. I mean, I want you to paint all the beautiful things in the world. You're the most beautiful thing in the world. Evan, these pictures of yours, 
of the sea and land and light. Each time I see them, my heart seems to stop. Land and light. I, I suppose it is a forlorn sort of place. Well, don't let's talk about it anymore. Tell me about Paris. Did you study there? For a while. Oh, Evan, I wish we could be there together. It'd be such fun. We'll do it, Jenny. I'll take you to the Luxembourg, to the fair at Fontainebleau, to saint Cloud. Oh, I feel as though we were there already. Though we've been spending our whole lives together. Jenny, what is it? What is it that, that makes a man and a woman know that of all the other men and women in the world, they belong to each other? Is it just chance they're being alive in the world at the same time? You think it's possible that there might be others in other times whom we might have loved and who might have loved us? Oh, no. No other. Among all the people who've lived from world's end to world's end, there's just one you must love. One you must seek till you find him. You, Evan. You, my darling. Jenny. I must go, Evan. No, Jenny, no, no, please. I don't want to. We'll meet again when the summer's over. Are you sure, Jenny? I don't quite know where. The wind blows. The sea flows. Oh, Evan, I want to be sure. Tell me you're sure. I'm sure, Jenny. I'll get my things. Oh, Evan, what a lovely scarf. It's yours, Jenny. A present for me. I've been saving it for a long time, ever since we first met in the park. Are you going to wear it? Because if you... Jenny! Jenny! The room was empty and without sound. Only the beat of rain striking against the window. As the weeks went by, the sun in the afternoon slanted law over the city. And sometimes at dusk, a wedge of wild duck wavered southward against the Manhattan sky. Summer had turned into fall, and Jenny did not return. I felt a dreadful loneliness. Where was she? There's just one thing I'd like to ask, Adams, before you tell me to mind my own business. All right, Spinny, what is it? I've asked it before. What if she never comes back? Oh, she's got to. Things happen to people, but the others still must go on living. You've never really believed any part of it, have you, Spinny? Well... It doesn't matter whether anyone believes or not, because I know... You once told me she was going to a convent. She's not there anymore. She graduated. But isn't it possible that the sisters would know where she is? Sisters? Maybe they kept in touch with her. Yes, there was one who was a favorite. Well, then why don't you write to her or see her? Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> and when am I going to see her? The Jenny of a portrait, I mean. A portrait? You'll see it, Spenny, one of these days. You wanted to see me about Mr. Adams? There was a girl, sister, who graduated from here. I thought possibly you might have some information as to where she is. Her name is Jenny Appleton. Jenny Appleton? You remember her? You were, you were her favorite teacher? Yes. Yes, I remember Jenny very well. Have you heard from her? Where is she? Mr. Adams, Jenny... Jenny died. When? Years ago. I'm afraid I've shocked you. Uh, well, no, we, we obviously aren't, aren't speaking of the same person. Did you know her family? No, I, I only know they were killed in an accident. They were trapeze performers? Yes. Then I'm afraid it must be the same Jenny Appleton. Her aunt brought her here shortly after the parents' death. She stayed with us until she graduated. Then her aunt came and took her to New England... It was that autumn that the terrible tidal wave hit the New England coast. Ten years ago, October 5th. I remember it well. Tidal wave? I learned later that Jenny was in the habit of sailing out every day to a little cove near an abandoned lighthouse. Land's End Light. It was during one of those trips that the tidal wave struck. That was the last anyone ever saw. Land and Light. That, that's where I'll find her. But Jenny is dead, Mr. Adams. You must accept that fact, hard as it may be. I won't accept it. Don't tell me she's dead. I held her in my arms three months ago, not ten years ago. I love her and I want her back. What vision you've had, I can't say. But don't doubt the ways of Providence. 
You must have faith. We know so little, Mr. Adams. So very little. I, I didn't mean to be abrupt. I'm most grateful, sister. When did you say that wave struck the coast? October 5th. And today is... October 3rd. That leaves me two days. Mr. Adams, that October 5th was many years ago. Are you so sure? You say we know so little. You say Jenny's parents were killed. I found her sobbing on a park bench the night it happened. You say she was a student here. I visited her here. You say she went to New England with her aunt. I was with her just before she left. Then how can you say it all happened many years ago? Yes. We know so little, and yet now I, I, I know a little more. Now I know the pattern of Jenny's life, but I also know that I am, I am part of it. She herself said the strands of our lives were woven together and nothing could break them. This I have faith in. Thank you, sister. Thank you for your kindness. You... You're going to Land's End? Yes. I'm going to Jenny. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, we will continue with Act Three of Portrait of Jenny. Tonight, we have as our guest a color photographer's delight, lovely Donna Martell. I understand, Donna, you're taking a well-earned vacation after your first leading role for Universal International. A busman's holiday, Mr. Keeley, watching other pictures being filmed. Anne Blythe and Robert Cummings had such fun playing in free-for-all, I turned up regularly to watch them. An unusual story of boy meets girl. You know, Percy Kilbride's handling of broad comedy makes good entertainment, too. I love the scene in Free For All in which Bob gets covered with oil. When he goes into Anne's shower to get it off, he has to dive through some nylon stockings hanging over the tub to dry. <laughs> well, I'm sure many a husband has experienced that. Wherever there are nylons, you'll find Lux Flakes. That's right, Mr. Kennedy. I always keep a box of them in my bathroom. A very easy way to make nylons last longer. These tiny diamonds of Lux bubble up into suds so fast, it takes almost no time to lux a pair of nylons. Strain tests showed that rubbing stockings with cake soap or using strong soaps made runs come sooner. Identical nylons that were washed with gentle lux flakes lasted twice as long. You can see why over 90% of the makers of stockings recommend lux flakes. I've noticed that colors stay true also when I use lux flakes. That's important for a carefully planned ensemble. It's no wonder smart American girls, stars and secretaries alike, stick to Lux for nylons. Thank you for coming tonight, Donna Martell. Here's Mr. William Keeley, our producer. The curtain rises on the third act of Portrait of Jenny, starring Joseph Cotton as Eben and Ann Baxter as Jenny. The next morning, I went to the art gallery of Matthews and Spinney. I brought along my portrait of Jenny. I'm impressed, Adams, tremendously impressed. Of course we can sell it for you. Not for sale, Mr. Matthews, not yet. I brought the portrait here hoping you'd store it for me until I come back. Come back? Well, yes, yes, I, I'll put it in the vault immediately. Where are you going, Adams? Well, I think I know where Jenny's going to be, and I've got to be there waiting for her. A little place on Cape Cod called... Land's End. You seem to be in a great hurry to get oh, there. There's not much time. I can get a train in an hour. If you let me show that portrait, Mr. Adams, I think I can promise you a lot of commission. In that case, perhaps you'll advance me $100. Give him the $100, Mr. Matthews. Well, yes, of course. Uh, what's the matter, Adams? Something wrong? Just give him the money. Oh, Thank you. As you say, Miss Finney. Thank you both for everything. <laughs> Have a good rest, my boy. And paint me a little church while you're there. A little white church with a big steeple. And don't get yourself drowned in the sea. What makes you say that? Oh, men do such foolish things. And I'm afraid of the ocean. <laughs> You're tough. The sea wouldn't get you. Tough ones drown, too, you know. <laughs> now get out of here before you miss your train. On 
On the night of October 4th, I reached the village of Land's End, facing the Atlantic Ocean. It was a quiet night, heavy with mist and fog. There was a light on in the hardware store. I guess my niece can put you up all right. You'll find her place on the side of the grade school. Thanks, I'll stop by later. Any warning of the storm yet? No storm around here, young fella. There's the barometer. Fair weather, that's what he says. Well, how far in advance would the barometer show if a storm were coming up? Far enough. Didn't show far enough when we had that hurricane back in the 20s. I heard about that hurricane. It happened just about this time of year, didn't it? I gotta come to think of it, it did. October the 5th. I'd like to get out to Land's End Light. Do you know where I could rent a boat? Land's End Light? Right. Yeah, but that light ain't been used for years, mister. I can't think why anybody would want to go out there. Never mind my reasons. Do you know someone with a boat? Yeah, you better go and see Eke Ellis. I've heard that he rents out sometimes. Well, uh, well, I'll find him. Oh, ain't hard to find Eek. He's always sitting in the same place. Now, just you go down to the jetty, mister. You'll find him. <laughs> Mighty nice of you to rent me your boat, boat Mr. Ellis. You don't know what good it'll do you. How did you figure to get her out in all this fog? You ain't a breath of wind, either. There'll be wind tomorrow. Plenty of it. Maybe. Never been too sure about them things. Not since that hurricane we had back in the 20s. What about the wave? I heard something about a great wave. Great wave? Yeah, there was a wave, all right. Sometimes you think you never really saw it. That uh, I just read about it like something in the scriptures. It rose up out of the sea like a mountain, coming toward the land like the day of judgment. You didn't happen to know a girl, a, a visitor, who was caught by the wave? Her name was Jenny Appleton? Huh. Well, you should ask that. Why, I, I used to rent her a boat. I shall never forget her till the day I die. You knew her, Mr. Adams? Yes, I knew her. <laughs> Pretty little thing, wasn't she? Big, sad eyes she had. Big, sad eyes and uh, something about her that uh, seemed to come from far away. What happened exactly? Where was she when when the wave struck? Well, she reached Land's End Point. That much is certain, because I found the bow of my boat tied to the wharf there. Uh, well, anyway, uh, what was left of it? Well, if she had made the lighthouse, she might have been saved. Isn't that so? Yeah, but she didn't make it. It's a pretty tough climb up them rocks to the light, especially for a female. All that wind and sea. I suppose it would be, alone. Well, you come by in the morning, Mr. Adams. The boat will be ready for you. The air was still and heavy when I left the jetty early the next morning, but once offshore, the fog lifted quickly. Overhead, the clouds were gathered, large and low and ugly. And then the wind came, sweeping up off the water, and I had all I could do to hold my course. A few miles out on a tiny point of land, I could see the old lighthouse and the white water beating against the rocks. The storm broke suddenly, thunder lightning and the angry lashing of the black sea. I sailed straight for the light, for the towering rocks that rose out of the surf. Somehow I, I reached the shore. Somehow I, I climbed over the rocks to the shelter of the lighthouse. Maybe if I reached the top of the lighthouse, I would see her. seemed to wheel, to turn in its course and sweep out toward the sea. And in the clearing light, I, I saw the boat, Jenny's boat, driving toward the beach. I rushed from the lighthouse, remembering what Eek Ellis had told me. She reached Land's End Point, that much is certain, because I found the bow of the boat tied to the wharf there. the shore. She saw me. She was running to me now across the rocky beach. Heaven! Heaven! Oh, 
Oh, it's been so long. Jenny. Let me look at you, I was so afraid I wouldn't find you. I'll never let you go again. Never. Hurry, darling. Give me your hand. We can't stay here. Oh, it's all right, Evan. Jenny, the wave, the tidal wave, it's coming. It's all right, Evan. Whatever happens. Whatever happens, it's you I want, Jenny, not just dreams of you. Evan. Please, please believe me. The wave will strike again and soon, but we can have a whole lifetime together. We have we can... all eternity together, Evan. Can't you see? We were lonely and unloved. I made an error, but you waited for me and we found each other. And now we must lose everything. No, no, Evan. Now we're just beginning. There is no life, my darling, until you've loved and been loved. And then there is no death. You are coming with me, Jenny. We can, we can reach the lighthouse. Oh, heaven, no. Go without me, How please. How can I? There's nothing in life, nothing at all without you. You must live on, Evan. Faith. The wave, Jenny. Here it comes. Goodbye, my darling. Jenny! He's all right now, Miss Penny. That is, he'll be all right. Still in bed, of course. You got company, young fella. Denny. Hello, Adam. What are you doing here? Well, frankly, I was worried about you, and it seems I had reason to be. You can thank Mr. Cobb you're alive. It's a mighty lucky thing he told E. Kellis where he was able to send for her. Or it ain't likely we'd ever have been able to find him at all. Mr. Cobb, tell me. Did you find anyone else? There wasn't nobody else darn fool enough to keep a boat out in that blow. But, but, but her boat, she had a boat. Don't rightly know what you're talking about, young fella. Quite no other boat. Well, I best get into the store. You saw Jenny again, didn't you, Adam? Oh, it was, it was awful, Spinny. I, I tried to hold on to her, but, but the wave... Take it easy. At least you saw her again. You believe, Spinny. I'm glad. Yes. You do, don't you? You believe it. That's all that matters. Spinny. That scarf. Where'd you get it? This? Hmm. It was near you when they found you out there on the beach. <laughs> yes, Benny, I... I saw Jenny again. You mean this is her? Jenny? <laughs> it's all right, Benny. I haven't lost her. Everything's all right now. Miss Finney, they bought it. I sold Adam's painting, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Oh, did you hear me? The Metropolitan Museum. Oh, uh, yes. I'm pleased beyond words, Mr. Matthews, but I'm not surprised, not really. Adam's is still on Cape Cod. I'll send him a telegram. Yes, I think you might. It's remarkable when you stop and think, isn't it, Miss Finney? Remarkable. <clears throat> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the celebrated painting by Eben Adams acquired by the museum a few years ago. There was nothing distinguished in any of Adam's earlier work, but all of his later period is now recognized as being greatly inspired, commencing with this haunting and almost legendary portrait of Jenny. Portrait of Jenny. Oh, isn't she beautiful? I wonder if she was real, Miss Finney. I don't know. Oh, she must have been. What does it matter? She was real to him or she couldn't look so alive. How very wise you are. for their curtain call. If you have trouble, trouble, trouble with washing dishes, change to Lux Play. And they will bubble, bubble, bubble your troubles away. These gentle suds are richer. They do your dishes quicker. Let L-U-X bubble your troubles away. These tiny diamonds of Lux really speed up dishwashing. They burst into suds instantly. Thick, rich suds that last and last. Lux flakes are thrifty, too, because they go further. 
Ounce for ounce, Lux Flakes wash up to twice as many dishes as any of ten other leading soaps. Yes, Lux Flakes do more dishes and do them faster. And mild Lux Flakes leave hands smooth, lovely, in spite of dishwashing three times a day. Here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. Returning to the footlights now are the stars who brought the portrait of Jenny to life. Joseph Cotton and Ann Baxter. <laughs> Joe, it seems that each time you're a guest here, you've just returned from Europe. Where was it this time? Italy, Bill. It's a lovely country, but the best part of traveling is, is always the trip home. And we're certainly glad to have you back. Okay. Incidentally, I remember the last time you worked with Anne, you played her father. Yes, I was thinking how much younger Daddy is looking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hasn't that actor star husband of yours, John Hodiak, been abroad making a picture too? Yes, John just returned, and I gave him quite a surprise. I started to remodel the house while he was gone. Well, they'll do it every time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd make a few simple changes, but you know, it got so complicated we had to move to an apartment till it's finished. Well... Be sure and leave room in the cupboard for Lux Flakes. I certainly will. I couldn't get along without Lux Flakes wherever I live. Now, won't you tell us about next Monday's play? First, uh, let me tell you about our stars. We'll have one of our popular favorites, Van Heflin. And co-starring with him, a bright new star, who has just made a spectacular hit on the screen, Miss Janet Lee. The play is a real spine tingler. The Metro Golden Mayor hit, High Wall. This is a story of a man accused of murder who tracks down the real killer and clears himself. A thrilling drama of suspense. I know we'll all enjoy that, Bill. Good night. Good night, Good night and thank you both. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Van Heflin and Janet Lee. In High Wall. This is William Keeling saying good night to you from Hollywood. Joseph Cotton will soon be seen in the Carol Reed production, The Third Man, co starring with Valley and Orson Welles. Ann Baxter appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of Prince of Foxes, starring Tyrone. Audley as Miss Spinney, Bill Johnstone as Matthews, Eddie Marr as Gus, and Norma Jean Nilsson, Tudor Owen, Janet Scott, Gwen Delano, Herbert Butterfield, Donald Randolph, Charlotte Lawrence, Lou Krugman, and Jane Webb. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear High Wall, starring Van Heflin and Janet Lee. Who's the prettiest Lux girl born in 1934? She may be from your hometown. Lux Radio Theater's 15th anniversary contest for Lux girls is in full swing now. Cast your vote today. See the pictures of your six local candidates and get voting instructions slip at your grocers. Choose your favorite, write her name on a Lux toilet soap wrapper, and send it to this station. Vote as many times as you wish, but each vote must be written on a Lux toilet soap wrapper. The name of the lucky winner from your area will be announced on the Lux Radio Theater on November 21st. The picture of the winner from each local area will be sent to Hollywood. Then, June Haver and Mark Stevens, stars of the 20th Century Fox Technicolor production, Oh, You Beautiful Doll, will select the national winner. Hurry, vote for your favorite 15-year-old Lux girl today. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of High Wall, starring Van Heflin and Janet Lee. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>